What is going on everyone? It's your guy Cole Jackson back here on Road Graders and today we are going to be asking a simple question. Is it time to panic about Ronnie Stanley? If you're looking forward to this breakdown, hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here and obviously drop a comment down below as we go through this breakdown of Ronnie Stanley's pass protection. Now you guys will remember a few weeks ago after week five against the Pittsburgh Steelers, we did a film video breaking down his nine pressures allowed. Since then in Tennessee and or against Tennessee and Detroit, he allowed four pressures in those two games, looked a little bit better. Then he comes back out in this one, allows four with a sack. And so, you know, just as you think there's a little bit of rebounding going on, he struggles again. Now, the reason I am concerned and, you know, I will go through what I think the reasons are, but it's just the same issues that we looked at in that Pittsburgh game video. It's, it's you know, the same issues are creeping up. That same inability to drop his anchor, re-engage his base, all that stuff. And so it just begs the question, when is it time to panic? When is it time to worry about this? So let's get into it. Let's get into the film. I'm going to get the first rep here. Kind of a good little intro video to what we're talking about. So in terms of Ronnie's movement skills, I really have no concern. Watch how he reaches a set point here. You know, he's moving well. Gets out, squares up his defender. He's got that helmet inside. Pretty much everything I want to see from him. He just once again has a narrow base. As the contact point comes, he hits his punch. And he's already kind of in retreat mode because he hasn't set his feet. Doesn't have that strong back I want to see out of him. And he has really straight legs. He hasn't been able to drop that butt down. Re-engage his base. And, uh, you know, he ends up basically every single time he's kind of just fighting to get his feet down and, and kind of anchor. So that's going to be kind of the reoccurring theme here. We get into this next rep. Once again, it's almost the same thing, right? So I again, movement skills are fine. He's pretty much square this entire time. He's got that inside head. Gets out there. Lands the punch, but this is what I want you guys to keep an eye on. Straight legs. Arch, not an arch back. You want to see kind of a bit of a tabletop back there with that butt dropping down, able to engage his base because that's where his power is coming from. His, his feet are spread a little bit better to give him that wide base of support, but he's not able to sink down. And so I'm wondering if he's losing his flexibility on this one. So, and then you see right here, you know, he's in the panic feet, right? Where he's just kind of hopping back and trying to establish his base and ends up right in Lamar's kitchen. I wouldn't have minded this rep so much if he kept that leverage point here. So he, he kind of has it at this point. He wants to get that inside hand and then force him out the back of the pocket. And that way, if he if you have that inside leverage, if he tries to come inside of you or spin like he does, you already have the leverage point. And if he tries to go outside, you just keep pushing him out the back of the pocket. But as you see right there, he loses it. He, that hand kind of comes up. That opens the spin move. So didn't like that. Lamar, obviously, being the athlete that he is, doesn't matter. Nice little flip to Gus for a gain. Beautiful play. Here we're going to see it again right into Lamar's lap. This was the almost interception that Bateman wrestled away. Um, but same issue that we're seeing. So again, no issue getting out to him. Movement skills are fine. Squared up on the wide, wide tech. Right there. You know, he's not sitting into his, his anchor at all. Straight leg. Punch came out okay. But he's not able to anchor. Driven right into Lamar. So this is the stuff that keeps coming up that I'm starting to get concerned about. Another rep here on a quick set. Doesn't end up mattering. Touchdown to Andrews, but, you know, he gets out on, on him quick. Usually this was one of his strengths, his ability to move out and engage here. You know, this actually looks okay. You can see a little bit more bend, and that's good. But as his hands get pushed away, he's not able to, once again renegotiate his base there and he ends up again with panic feet walking backwards cool little note here from mark i thought this was neat their chemistry is on point so you see the middle of the field start to kind of empty this hand is going to basically point didn't really matter because lamar is already caulking the ball but you see right there just that little chemistry between the two of them it's something i've noticed develop since he's been here now we're going to get into a bit of a communication error this is something that i actually do think is a symptom of this Ronnie's struggling through this game. He's getting driven back a lot. He's really focused on basically all he can do at this point is get out to a set point as soon as he can and engage the guy, the edge rusher, so that he can, you know, start those kind of plant foot as he goes back and try and recover as much as he can. 
So he's so focused on getting out here that he's not reading the defense at all. So you're going to see typically what you'd want to see inside outside blocking. So I'd want to see this guy as the man he's blocking. But with the running back staying in, it's a little bit different. Ronnie could know that the protection has the running back coming inside. So that would become his man. So I'm a little less worried about that. This has to be Justice Hill's man. Unfortunately, Justice ends up blocking the same guy as John Simpson, as you see here. And this guy runs through free. So that's on Justice Hill, in my opinion. But what Ronnie doesn't see is the DB that was over top of Mark also coming. And so he's out. So now you have two guys running unblocked, um, which is not good. And it, they end up adjusting here at the end. Simpson passes off. But Simpson shouldn't have to pass off. Hill should have been taking the first man. And then it would have been Ronnie's responsibility for the second man. But, you know, this ended up being an incompletion. But it was almost another fumble for the Ravens. So I think that's one of those things where mentally he's so focused on getting out into his set that he's not reading the play properly. Another rep here. And this one, you know, I'll give this. I think he slipped. Um, this field looked like trash. That's what it kind of looks like to me. But again, he's getting out in space, squared up well. He's got that helmet inside. And then we got a straight leg bent over. So, so kind of the same thing. I do think he slips here, though. I, I'll give him that. Um, ends up getting swam. Gives up the sack. Uh, so I think this was a combination of... You know, poor anchor, obviously, but also I think the turf didn't do him any favors on this one. Um, so just full disclosure, that is what I think happened there. So that's what I'm seeing from Ronnie. You know, I don't want to throw the towel in on him. He's a vet. He's coming off that knee injury. How much is that knee injury affecting him is the real question. Is that why he's not able to bend? I don't really recall this being a huge issue in week one before he hurt his knee. Um, he did allow a sack in that game, but from what I remember, it wasn't off of a poor anchor play. Um, the poor anchor kind of came since he's been back um, post-injury in week five. So, you know, looking forward to what you guys think. Really looking forward to your comments. Hit that like button and subscribe. If you're new here, be good to yourselves, be good to each other. Peace out, everyone.